Hi, I'm Larry Whitmer and welcome to another edition of Dissecting with Emily. Uh, and here is Emily, Emily Caggiano, uh, who's a freshman in Ohio University's Honors Tutorial College. Actually behind us here is, is really the, the first edition of Dissecting with Emily, although we didn't call it that at, at, at the time. We really got interested in this automatic flexion extension mechanism that really all birds have. We were looking at it here in an albatross, and we really wanted to dig in and see how this automatic mechanism worked. So we actually dissected and then ultimately skeletonized uh, that albatross, and, and then we hot glued all the bones together. Um, Emily, why don't you run us through the, the osteology here? So here you have uh, the humerus, and then you have the ulna and the radius, and then you have the carpometacarpus, which kind of encompasses the wrist and then the hand of the bird. And then another bone that we found that we weren't really expecting is this little tiny bone right here that we call the cubital ossicle. Yeah, that cubital ossicle was, was a surprise for us. Um, um, some people had talked about it in the literature, but for us it just lit up in the CT scans. What we'll see in a second is how intimately that little ossicle is tied into this mechanism. So um, the extension part about the, of this automatic extension flexion, flexion mechanism is pretty easy for us to understand. Emily, why don't you run us through uh, what, what's going on here? So you have the tricep muscle down here, which actually um, helps to extend the uh, elbow, but it's actually helped by some ligaments. You have the proptagial ligament, which starts all the way up here in the shoulder and actually extends all the way down into the wrist. And then you have the ligaments on the limitans cubitae ligament, which is just um, the limiting ligament of the elbow that helps keep it from hyperextending. And then you have these little guys down here, which are the um, extensor carpi radialis, which also go up into the wrist and attach there like the proptagial ligament. And the fact that these two guys actually attach into the wrist um, allow it when the arm is straightened, they actually pull back on the wrist and help it to extend. Right, so um, we can see here that this a uh, little ossicle right here is intimately associated with all of these structures. Uh, the, the ligament here attaches to it, the muscles attached to it, and you can see how this cubital ossicle right here actually tethers the propatagial ligament, which might be important in maintaining the structure of the leading edge of the wing, maybe even uh, sort of forcing the, the, the structure or the camber uh, of the wing itself. So this extension mechanism is pretty easy for us to understand. The flexion mechanism uh, was a little harder. Other people had looked at it looking at something like a pigeon, and the idea there was that was a really important part about the automatic flexion mechanism was the fact that the muscles of the arm and the muscles of the forearm would collide. The collision of these muscles would then press on the radius, causing it to move distally, and then push the wrist into flexion. That idea might work pretty well for a pigeon, which has a pretty heavily muscled uh, set of wing bones, uh, but how did that hypothesis play out for our albatross? Um, it turns out not very well. Uh, we removed zero muscle from this arm, and as you can see, that it's really lightly muscled. This is actually a uh, bicep right here, so it's teeny tiny muscle. And so when you actually bring the two bones together, the, um, there's no muscle down here to collide and displace the radius. So something else has to be in place because these guys do have this automatic flexion mechanism. So what, what, who are the players here? Uh, you, there's actually two muscles that we found. You have the flexor carpi ulnaris down here. And then on the other side, in between the ulna and the radius, you actually have the extensor carpi ulnaris. And even though it has the name of extensor, it has a pulley system up in the wrist so that when the arm is actually brought in, you can see that it pulls on the wrist and actually helps to bring it back in. Right, so these two muscles, one of which is flexor carpi ulnaris and the other is called extensor carpi ulnaris, but it's actually a flexor, are going to be important in that flexion mechanism. And of course, if those muscles are in a live animal, they will contract and cause that, that, that flexion. What's interesting is that even in death, or even if the wing is taken off the body, these muscles sort of act like ligaments to cause that automatic flexion. There's potentially even a bony mechanism involved here. If you look at the structure of the elbow in here, there is um, uh, sort of an elliptical structure of this condyle of the humerus right here. And so as the head of the radius slides on that condyle during flexion, it causes the radius to move distally, which will then push on a little bone here in the wrist called the radiali, which will then cause flexion of, 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 the, of the hand. 
And so uh, we really got interested in this automatic flexion and extension mechanism. Extension mechanism was pretty easy to understand. The flexion part was a little harder and maybe not all birds are doing it exactly uh, the same. But it's been a real privilege to be able to work on these albatross, which are such marvelous birds. And hopefully you've learned a little bit about it, this automatic extension flexion mechanism that really all birds have. So that's it for today's episode of Dissecting with Emily. I'm Larry and this is Emily and thanks for watching.